That's exactly where we're going to go because that's the root of all of this frustration. That's why he walked away from the table before they finished turning over the cards on the first season of Bryce Young and Frank Reich working together in Carolina. There has been a belief for months now that David Tepper wanted Bryce Young, that David Tepper made it clear he wanted Bryce Young, and that the people who work for David Tepper, lest they be viewed as somebody who's not fully aligned with the multi-billionaire who owns the team, they went along with what they knew the boss was ultimately going to do. Here's David Tepper from yesterday responding to reports that Frank Reich, not Reich, but Reich wanted C.J. Stroud and that Tepper wanted Bryce Young. On all those decisions, um, you know, whether it was a head coach, whether it was Bryce, I don't really vote on those decisions until the last piece. Okay, so those decisions are made by, you know, in the case of the by the football people. Now, look, everything that's right and everything that's wrong here ultimately is my fault. Okay, I have the final say. But as far as those decisions, whether it's Frank Wright or it's Bryce Young, um, those decisions were made. And in the case of Bryce, it was almost, I believe it was a unanimous decision on the coaches and the, and the scouts and very strong opinions at the time. Um, now, it's been reported and we talked about it. Originally, we were going to go to the number two pick and, and uh, we thought we'd get CJ because we thought the Texans were going to pick Bryce. And listen, we preferred Bryce. He was our number one pick. We had a lot of conviction. Um, but, uh, you know, to, in, in answer to your questions, it's just not the way the process was done. The process was done the way the process was done. And again, even though if there was a process with five people in the room and, four, and the way the votes came in, it was Frank was the first choice, I always could veto that choice. And even if it was Bryce and the votes came in unanimously in this particular case, I could have vetoed that choice. He said so much there. He revealed so much that should be depressing to Panthers fans. He's basically admitting he runs the show and he reserves the right to ignore, to ignore what the paid professionals who have been doing this their whole professional lives have chosen to do. They can all come in and say, we want CJ, we want CJ, we want CJ. Okay, fine. I want Bryce. He's got that power and he's willing to talk about his ability to use it. That's that's billionaire privilege to the extreme, where you're prepared to ignore every one of the people who have been doing this their whole lives, their opinions, because you know better. How the how ooh, how the hell how how the fudge do you know better than the people who have been doing it their whole lives when unanimously they say we want to go this way and you want to go the other way? Just the fact that that's his attitude, Chris. That that explains why it was unanimous for Bryce Young. You know why it was unanimous for Bryce Young? Yeah, I know. Because they all knew what the boss wanted. Yeah. They all knew what the boss wanted. And I did a little digging last night. Yeah. They all knew what the boss wanted. Yeah. So when it's time to vote and you know what the boss wants, what's your vote going to be? What's, it's kind of like if there was a jury system where the foreperson also had final say over the verdict and what the other jurors said didn't matter – and the other jurors knew when it's time to cast your ballots, why waste your time? You know where this is going to go. There's a certain element of that to it. What's the point? Especially when the, the and this is where the analogy goes sideways. The four person, the jury can fire you from the jury. Yeah, like right. you just, you know, you need to, you, you need to go along to get along. And even then it didn't help Frank Reich. He went along and he still got fired even if he would have wanted C.J. Stroud. It doesn't matter. That's the point. It doesn't matter if he would have preferred C.J. Stroud. The boss wanted Bryce Young, and the whole process was about supporting what the boss wanted. So the boss looks good. And I, I really do think the reason this all fell apart, because C.J. Stroud's been so good. I think it's if, a huge if part of it. C.J. Stroud yeah. isn't as great as he's been, yes. Frank Reich is still employed by David Tepper. <laughs> You're funny. Yeah, I, 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 I totally agree with you there. That, that put like three, four, five times more pressure on the whole situation. Each week that went by, it was like, 
Holy cow. I mean, C.J. Stroud. I mean, C.J. Stroud, other than the Panthers game, has been phenomenal in every game this year, ironically. I mean, really. That was his worst game of the year, coming off the bye, playing the Carolina Panthers. And, of course, they lost that game. But, I, I mean, there's too many signs. There's too many things. First off, David Tepper already let us know how smitten he was with Bryce Young after the, the dinner they had after his workout. That sounds like from you go back and look at stuff from there, it kind of goes to like, oh, that that their mind was made up right then. They had dinner and, you know, Bryce Young, I know, is a great young man and he's charismatic and that he showed David Tepper and family, I'm the guy you want, and they were sold after that. There's no doubt. You know, I, I'm like you. I did some digging, too, with a lot of people in the NFL because it's just like it's one of those things, you know, hey, I know this person. They know some people in Carolina. They know some people. Let me do it. And, yeah, I mean, listen, everybody believes that David Tepper is a huge meddler in that organization and sticks his nose into a lot of conversations, right? And I can't – and I'm going to share this, right, because, you know, one, like, you know, Frank Reich, okay – We've talked about this back during the draft process. All right? There's nothing in his history that says he would believe in a quarterback like Bryce Young. Nothing, right? Frank Reich is old school, 80s quarterback like we talked about, where he believes in quarterbacks that were like him or the guy he backed up in Jim Kelly. That guy can stand in there and make throws all over the field, and he's not going to blink or flinch when the pocket collapses or people are around me, right? We've talked about this with Kyler Murray. There's a faction of football when I worked in New England. They were, there was a certain size measurement where if you were below it, you can't play football for the New England Patriots and quarterback because you're not big enough and strong enough, and you're not going to be able to throw through the elements, and it's not going to translate to cold playoff football, and they want nothing to do with it. And there's still a huge faction in the NFL that believes in that and this is where I'm getting to and my point is is you know as we got close to the draft right you know I know a lot of people in the Carolina organization and I had talks with some of these people at the combine about the quarterbacks and then it was a few weeks before the draft and I've told you this and I'm sharing it now I felt like I was being sold on Bryce Young by all them. Like they knew I was a CJ Stroud guy. They knew he was in my tier one by himself with everybody else, you know, below it. And I felt like I was being give the being read the, you know, the riot act and what I'm missing about Bryce Young and why it'll work and why he's worth the number one pick. Again, I nobody tattletailed on David Tepper and was like, oh, Tepper's making us do this or whatever. But I know I've told you in the past, and I'm speaking about it publicly, that, yeah, I felt like I was being sold on Bryce Young by people in that Carolina organization. And that's always led me to believe that David Tepper, you know, had his his hand in the stew there. And I think that's the basic reality. You're not going to have unanimity among an entire coaching staff when you factor in all their different experiences and attributes and likes and dislikes and you throw in the scouts. You're not going to have them all saying Bryce Young over C.J. Stroud based on the point you made. There are people, a chunk, and we've talked about Kyler Murray in the past, like if he was available to be traded, how many teams would really want him? Not many because you're going to have that mindset out right. there that there's that range. It's The, the Parcells range, I think, was like 6'2 to 6'7. Exactly right. Because he also thought you could be too tall. Too to tall position, isn't good like either. Dan McGuire. Exactly. Big. Exactly. Right. So there, there was a range that, that you fit, and that's it. It's just period. It's sorry. You're not tall enough. It, we're, we, you, you can play for somebody else, but you can't play for me. So how are you going to have, when you look at all the people in that organization in football operations, all the scouts, all the coaches, how in the world are you going to have a unanimous decision? And, and he did make a Freudian slip, as an executive from another team pointed out. He says it was almost, I believe it was unanimous. There may have been, there may have been a brave soul or two who dared, who dared to push back against what Veruca Salt wanted. But let's assume that he's telling the truth when he says it was unanimous. How the hell is it unanimous unless they all know this is what the boss wants? We got to make chicken salad here. Yeah, you know, we may prefer a guy on the right side of six feet. Yeah, you know, there really isn't any one thing Bryce Young does that makes us say, oh, wow, that's guy, that guy's going to be another Mahomes. Like he's he's going to manage and he's going to, you know, and he's going to deliver the ball. He's going to run an offense once we put an offense around him. But 
there isn't anything about him that makes us say, wow, this is the no-brainer number one overall pick. But the boss wants him. And so that's the way we're going. And that's that's what happened. It's so obvious for those of us who follow this all the time. And I think it's becoming obvious to the fan base as well. And I think yesterday, if you really look at what he said yesterday and listen to it and understand what it means, the evidence is there that, number one, this guy runs the show. He's not afraid to say so. And he made it known that he liked Bryce Young. That's how it was unanimous because nobody wants, nobody wants to push back against the guy who may be extremely patient when it comes to managing head funds, but he, we know, we know he's not patient when it comes to his sports teams. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think that's very true. It's well said. And, and it's he wants it now. I don't, I don't, you know, I do believe that it's a guy that wants to win. He wants to, he's willing to spend money and do the things for the organization to win, right? But it, it's it's not something that you can just snap your fingers at and and you know or or reading you know I don't know the scroll on the, you know on in in Wall Street and figuring out oh if I sell this and buy high and sell low and boom 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 it's just not quite as easy as that it's human beings there's a lot of moving parts with this and I think you know he's at a beginner phase of learning the game that way. And that's where, you know, between the impatience, wanting it now, right, ego, and, hey, I'm smart. I figured one thing out. I'm sure I can figure this out right away. It's just not as easy as that. It takes a little time. It takes the nuance that we talked about. You got to learn from some people who have been around the game. And right now it seems like he's a little hasty and sticking his nose where he doesn't belong at times and, and you know, making decisions that are uh, compromising the, the organization right now. You know, it reminds me of a movie from like 15 years ago that I vaguely recall to the point where maybe it wasn't even a, a movie. Maybe I just had a weird. Maybe it was one of your night. dumb dreams think, again. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> because Sims back at his high school at his current age, bullying all the kids to vote for him to be class president. I think it was a movie with Billy Bob Thornton, and it may have been called like the astronaut farmer or something very obvious like that. But it was a guy who was a farmer who wanted to be an astronaut. And, and it's like, I'm going to work really hard. Right, I'm going to work really hard at this, and I want it really bad. There's a lot of stuff that no matter how committed you are to doing it, no matter how badly you want it, it just doesn't work that way. It's not a matter of elbow grease, of getting up early and staying up late. There's so much more that goes into it. And I think David Tepper believes that his desire, his work ethic, and all the things that made him king of the hedge funds will make him king of the billionaires, have the shiniest gold toilet of all of them, have the most Lombardi trophies of all of them, be able to say, I'm the best of all the oligarchs, and I'm going to live forever. I mean, that, that element crept through yesterday. I mean, when he said, oh, I hope he eulogizes me in 40 years, the next coach, oh, 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 next coach I hope he eulogizes me in 40 years. It's like, you're 66. And you don't exactly exude guy who's going to make it to 100. So, but that's the attitude. I've wanted everything else. I'm going to win at this too. I'm going to beat everything, including death. That, that becomes the hubris that infects the overall existence of someone like that. It, it really is amazing. It's borderline Shakespearean that in this sport we love, the people who ultimately own the teams are that way. Not all of them, but plenty of them. Yeah, no, it, it is. It's amazing. Uh, it's 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 adds to the intrigue of our sport, and we'll see where this goes. You know, again, there's only 32 of these jobs out there, so somebody's still going to want this job. Doesn't matter that David Tepper sticks his nose in the situation a little bit. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.